Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react. My son, for the total 100% to be filled with peace, always follow this model of existence I am about to teach you. If you climb up the 6 levels of enlightenment with me, you will understand the true value of building bonds and the wisdom will naturally come to you. So can I ask you something? Are you by any chance in a relationship? Man is a social animal and he is in a relationship all the time. And mind you, many relationships at the same time. You must be wondering, how can there be many relationships at the same time? Right from the birth, the first relationship that we get is a mother, a father. Similarly, we would have a brother or a sister. Then, as we grow up, there are different relationships that come up. We get married, we have children, we become fathers and things like that. Now, similarly, the atoms in chemistry also tend to form relationships. Now, what is the need for those relationships? For humans, basically, it is there to provide emotional and mental stability. Similarly, for the atoms to get stable, they also need to form relationships, which is called as a bond in the chemical world. Now, you must be wondering what sort of stability does an atom need? Because the atom would not need an emotional stability or a mental stability. So that stability that we are talking of is actually to fulfill its octet. Now, what is an octet? The valence shell of an atom, if it gets completely filled, that is, if it gets eight electrons in its outermost shell, it is supposed to be stable. Why that number eight gets it to stability? Because this brings it to the noble gas configuration. And we know that the noble gases are the most stable atoms or the most stable elements for us. Because they themselves do not want to form bonds with their own species. Right? Now, this completion of octet is what is called as the octet rule. Now, there was a scientist called as Lewis. What he did was, he tried to show that how does an atom look like or how would we represent an atom while forming bonds. Because we cannot show all the electrons, the neutrons, protons and everything because that would make the things more complicated. So what he tried to do was, he tried to simplify everything. So he said, except the valence shell electrons, everything else will take it as a small point and that point would have a positive charge and would be called as a positive canal. Now, why the term positive? Now, for an atom, we know that the number of protons and the number of electrons are equal. Now, if I only consider the inner shell electrons and the protons, the ratio in which the protons and electrons are present, the number of protons would be higher. So, that means in that entity, you would have more of positive charge. That is why the charge positive. And by the English word, canal means a very small uh, crystal or a very small tiny particle. That is what is called as canal. So that is why this entire thing comes to be known as a positive canal. And the valence shell electrons are left as it is. So this is the complete representation of an atom. Now, if we take different atoms, Suppose if I take hydrogen. Now, hydrogen would not have any inner shell electrons. So, what happens? The positive canal would only be that one proton that is there. And we will represent that positive canal by the symbol itself. So, we'll write it as H. And we'll put this dot over here, which is representing that one valence electron that hydrogen has. Now, let's take oxygen. The total number of electrons that the oxygen has is 8. And the general electronic configuration that we write is 2, 6. Right? So that means 2 electrons are present in the inner shell and 6 electrons are present in the outermost shell. So how would the Lewis structure for oxygen look like? So you will have O, 
which is representing the positive canal and we'll mark six dots all the six dots representing an electron each now you just can't have uh, the placement of these dots randomly like i cannot represent a lewis structure of oxygen like this it has to be symmetrical where i can draw a plus two electrons on this side two on this side and two on this side so this side would be completely empty so this is how a symmetrical representation of lewis structure is done now let us talk about say nitrogen now for nitrogen again we would have two five as the electronic configuration because it has seven electrons in total so the two electrons would become part of the positive canal and that representation would become n and the five electrons that we have would be two two and one so that is how the nitrogen can be represented now in some books they also represent nitrogen as n two dots one dot on this side the other one on this side and one at the bottom so what they are trying to do is they are just trying to show it symmetrically because this structure can be used later on in a compound also right so if you draw any of these two structures it's absolutely correct now when we as human beings fall into different surroundings or we undergo different interactions our way of bonding with the other person is different if we are in a business meeting we have a formal interaction if we are with our own pet the interaction changes completely if i am with my mother the interaction is of a different level altogether so you see our interaction our level of relationships or our bonding is different with different people different surroundings and what is the requirement out of that relationship now similarly in the chemical world atoms also do bondings differently now one such bonding that we will talk of is the covalent bond now covalent bond is something you must be hearing from your ninth class onwards that there is something called as covalent bond But do we actually know what covalent bond is i think you would be having a fair bit of idea about it but i'll just reinforce the entire thing now what happens is if i take one of the atoms let's say any random atom and over here also i take any random atom right and i say that it has seven electrons in the outermost shell now for gaining stability how many electrons does this need eight and how many For this eight, but where do they get the one one electron from? Then what they do is mutually they decide that we'll share one electron each. So when they share, what they do? They come close. Their electron clouds start overlapping, and now if you look carefully, these electrons are a part of this atom and this atom at the same time. So if you count the number of electrons now. with one atom it would be 8 so this is how they gain stability by forming a covalent bond that is the first type of relationship or the first type of bond you can say for the atoms